Hi, this is Jason at Primal Engineering. I'm going to show you how to assemble our, our gripper today. It's a basic gripper with gear-driven arms. It has a high-tech HS425BB. That's a double ball bearing servo. And before we get started here, I'll give a few features of it. It has uh, some nice thick arms if you want to mount anything to or put any other swivel pads. It's really easy to mount to. Uh, you can screw onto this with whatever you want. Um, we actually have a couple of end panels that we put on here that easily mount and we can snap onto our gobbit chassis. Just changing out these front plates and just snap right in place. But you can put it on whatever kind of project you, you have in mind. Uh, it also is easy to modify with your standard woodworking equipment. You can cut and slice and sand and grind whatever you need to. Uh, you don't need any special tooling. So if you need to change the shape of an arm or you need to cut these tabs off because you want to have a flush mount or to attach a sensor to here or whatever, it's really easy to, to stick items on there. Plus you have a lot of surface area too, even if you're just doing double stick tape or Velcro or something. It's a great material to work with. It's very flexible. Uh, it's got grip all the way around so that if you're doing round objects like this, you can grab them on the outside or you can grab them on the inside. The smaller obviously not as easy. You get a square object to grab those very well. Um, just automatically resizes. So different ways you can grab. You get the extra large where you know it kind of grabs but hey maybe you're not getting well you know what you have an option. You can come in and grab on the inside. So, and you have large rectangulars, you can also grab nice and easy. So, there you go. Let's start putting one of these together. It comes bagged up. You'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver. You need a number one Phillips screwdriver. And I'm just going to use a Sharpie to mark a reference point. But you don't need that for the assembly. So I'll just unbag this and start putting this guy together. We have a hardware bag. We've got some foam grip. We have the HS425 BB servo. We have our base plate. Our, we have the driven arm. And we have the free arm. So this is the arm that the servo will drive. This is the arm that will just spin freely. So, we have, so this is the free arm. This is the servo driven arm. Okay. So unpackage the hardware. Okay. And here we have the pivot bushing. We have a T-nut, we have four number six by half inch truss head sheet metal screws, we have four number two by half inch pan head sheet metal screws, and we have a number six by seven eighths I believe flat head machine screw. Okay, open up our servo box, there's some extra parts in here, different horns and screws and hardware, you, you will not need those for this. I'll just set those aside because you never know when you're going to change your mind on your project. Okay, so here's the servo. Let's get started putting this together. So the first step, we'll put the T-nut. Oh, actually, you know what? First up, we're going to put the grip on first. That'd be smart. So, this, it's just got an adhesive backing on it. So, you just start to peel it. Start to peel it. There we go. Don't take it all the way off because you'll start to stick to everything as you're working. It's good to have this on here to keep you from getting stuck. But we're going to start it right inside here. You can see. 
you start the, the foam grip here, work your way around. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll start it inside here. Push it all the way in there, get it set. Just kind of push it down and just start working your way around. Try and keep it in there. Just going to fold it a little bit. Make sure you don't set it where you don't want it yet. Trying to keep it in the middle, you know, a little bit, not too far over on either side, just right, right down the middle. Keep working this guy. Now I can go ahead and pull the rest off. And just, there we go, and push it back on all the way around. Okay, I'll do the next one. And it's easier to grab the foam here, pull it away from the paper than trying to grab the paper. Now I'll we'll see if I have any luck. I peeled the whole thing. And I show you. you gotta be a little more careful. See, I gotta keep this away. Don't want to touch the adhesive any more than you have to because it's it starts losing its sticky. So you can do it either way with the paper or without. I guess it's really not that bad either way. But pushing it back down all the way, it's set. Okay, so now we'll put we're going to attach the free arm to the base. So the first step is to get the T nut, drop it in here. It might have a little. It might be a little snug, just if it, if it is, just press it in. I'll set that aside. Grab the pivot bushing, drop it in there. This should spin freely. If it does not, move it back and forth a little bit, make sure it works good. So a little resistance is okay, but a lot is bad. So uh, then we'll go ahead and take the machine screw, the flathead machine screw, push it through, pick this guy up. Let me just line that up into the hole, let it slide in, start to turn it by hand, okay, and I'll take my number two screwdriver, number two Phillips screwdriver, start to turn it in, at, at a certain point it's probably going to start to get snug, okay, right about in there, or I'll have to drive it in a little harder, so I'll put it down on the table, it's, it's a locking nut so that it doesn't start to work its way loose like the same pivots back and forth. So I, I got it all tight and this thing still fr spins freely. That's good. So, okay, it's no wiggle. It's good. All right, next we're going to mount the drive arm to the servo horn. This is the horn. Uh, the first step to do is to turn this clockwise gently. It has some movement until, it, until you feel a hard stop. Okay, hard stop. Now I'm going to hold the horn in place and take it off. I'm going to drive this, run the screw. I'm holding it so it doesn't twist on me. If it does twist after you drive, after you remove the screw, just turn it back. If it, if it moves while you're doing that, just turn it back and then pull it off carefully. Again, that it doesn't spin. Okay, set your servo aside. Now, the holes on these, it's not, it's not the same. The the this oops, there's my screw. Uh, the this distance is different than this distance. You can see a little bit of variance there. So they have to line up with these patterns on these guys. So and we're going to go for the middle hole here, the middle hole here, middle and middle. I'm just so it's easier to tell. I'm going to mark. I'm going to start with this one as my reference. So I'm starting with that guy. That's what I want to mount to first. So I'm going to take the number two screws, put one in towards the point here. I'll just start with this one as a good reference. Just drop that in. It sticks through just a little bit. Take that one, the one that I marked, and I'm going to line that up. Just let it seat onto that screw so it's on there a little bit. And then I'm going to let the screw kind of slide back a little bit. And I'm just going to make sure this goes all the way in that pocket. So I'm still holding it together. And I'm going to start this. I'm going to get it to just start to bite in. 
Okay, but I'm not going to make it tight. See, I didn't make it really tight. I'll go ahead and drop in the other screws. This is in place now, but I'm going to go ahead and drop in the other three screws. And I'll just start each of those. Again, I'm not tightening it down. I'm just making sure, I'm just basically driving the screw to the arm, but not tight. So once they're all set, and they're, see, they're not even sticking through. Once they're all set, now I can start to drive them in one at a time. And what I'm going to do is actually drive it in until it goes flush into the into the arm. So when we're done, we want it to look like this, where it's driven in all the way, so it's flush. It'll countersink in. So like I said, this is an expanded, rigid foam. So it's rigid, but it's still kind of soft like wood. So I can drive these screws in, and I'm just don't have to do too much pressure, uh, and it goes flush. So. This is probably easier to do down on the table, so you can push down with, with the more cons easy, consistent force. You don't accidentally slip and stab yourself. Uh, I'm not pressing that hard, but you know, for those that may be new to using hand tools, uh, if you do slip off, it kind of hurts. So keep it down on the table. I'm just doing this for so it's easier to see. Again, it's flush. And this is the number one Phillips screwdriver. Number two will not fit. And number zero is too small. Use the right Phillips screwdriver, makes a huge difference. So right size flat screwdriver. You know, it's really uh, the right tool for the job. That, that actually is very true. So now the screws are sticking through just a little bit. The tips just come through a little bit. Not too much, not too little, just right. Okay, now let's set this in place. Um, we're going to put the servo on. So I'm just going to use this other arm as a just to keep the this flat. Um, take the servo. The shaft of the servo needs to go in the in the pole side. Um, just drop it in there. Uh, actually, get the wire out of the way. Okay. Set it in place. Get our number six by half screws. Again, the number one Phillips screwdriver. These are stainless with this current set, so I'm just going to kind of hold it in place with my finger and go down to the hole, the pilot hole. Get it started. There's there's a little there's pilot holes in there, so I'm just starting to screw in there. So tighten this down till it just touches the servo and then back it off a little bit so the servo is not tight in place it can float a little okay and once you get the first one in it's a little easier to hold this in your hand so I'm going to take it all the way down to the servo and then just back it off just a hair The reason why we're not tightening it down all the way is we need to let the gears, they'll float and we'll mesh them into place. Oops. Okay. Okay, so I still have some, I got a little too tight over here. Now it still got, it can float around. That's what we want. Just ease it on there without causing it to rotate anymore. So there's a little bit, find the spot where, you know, from straight on there, just turn a little bit 
closed so that there's a little bit of gap in there. And then take the screw, put it in, tighten it down to the servo. Okay, now we go close it up, hold, we're going to grip this and squeeze these gears together and we're going to then tighten the servo in place. So just grab here and here. So I'm not touching the other arm, I'm touching the base. So from the arm, the driven arm to the base. So I'm just going to grab like that, jiggle this a little bit, make sure it's in a happy spot. And then I'll go ahead and start snugging those up while I'm holding this tight. Oops. So I just get each one of these snug and then go back and tighten it just a little bit more. Okay. You don't want to overdo it because you will keep crushing that servo further and further into the plastic base. So just get it a little bit and that's good. So now that is ready for mounting to whatever my project is.